Good evening, everyone. Um, today I'm going to be looking at a really interesting tutorial request that came through, which is how to make a grappling hook. Um, I'll talk a lot more about this just in a second. Um, as always, you'll find in the description a link to the download of the scenes. Um, but just to give a little playthrough of the scene, I have a special guest, Zachary. Uh, Zachary, would you like to, because you helped design some of the levels and helped with the mechanics, would you like to just play through the level as it is? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll... Um, I think I'll plug something. Oh, why don't we make it just full screen? Full screen, let's go there. Okay. Do that good stuff. All right, there you go. So, so we've got some big platforms, we've got some short platforms. If you hit the platform in the middle, um, we'll try again, there you go. Um, you just sort of hop up to the middle, but if you hit on the side, ooh, okay, sorry. not quite. Try again. Um, if you hit on the side, you jump up, but then you have the short platforms where pretty much any way you hit it. Um, so some platforms are, oh, that platform is close enough to reach. Oh, that platform isn't, unless you jump and then clench real tight. Oh, okay, not quite. I'll get it this time. You want to? You want a third try? Okay, give it a third try. Oh god, this is embarrassing. And you did it first They're time also hit. in the in the planning. Is he cracking under pressure? Oh, cracking under pressure. All right, well it's it's makeable. It it is. Um, and I'm gonna do it just to prove it. Da 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 da, and uh, okay. And so uh, today in our tutorial, we are gonna delete all of that run and start again. No one's gonna talk about it. No, um, we're not going to. Um, thank you very much for that, Zachary. Um, so you'll see in the scene we've got one scene called mechanics only and two behaviors. Uh, now I'll level with you. Uh, this didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. I wanted one level just to have mechanics, another level to showcase like how you could do art and stuff, um, but I sort of ran into issues, I ran into different complications, and I realized that I'd spent about enough time on it. Like, I like treating these tutorials as nice mini learning experiences. Um, I don't want them to keep dragging on. Maybe I'll come back and revisit it once I've learned some more, once I've developed a bit more, and be like, right, this is super easy. But for now, this is what I got. And as you can see, the rest of the level, the platforms get more and more stretched out, sort of encouraging you to jump and narrowly grab onto them. So this is what we have. We have our floor, we have our player, which has the regular animations on it. We have uh, a sprite called platform, another sprite called short platform, one called grapple ledge, and one called grapple helper. Um, let's just give a high level overview of how this all puts together. Um, under utilities, as, you, as always, Q resets the scene. Uh, character controls, um, so the first line just centers the player in the middle of the camera. The second line is quite an, is an interesting one. Um, I created a, this is under the player animations behavior. Player animations behavior has a single uh, action called animate the player. And I decided this is quite a neat way of, of keeping together all the like different lines of sort of stock player animations that you use. Um, so, this is called every frame, and this does all the checks you would normally check. Do you flip horizontally? Do you set it to jump or idle or anything? Um, and I encapsulate it nicely in one single action called animate the player. I guess the other thing I'm really, I really liked about this tutorial is uh, how I tried to use behaviors, and I thought that was like a re I thought that was really interesting. Um, how to like make your events in this scene as minimal as possible, because you know. Most other tutorials that you see, like even on the GDevelop website, well, they always have these lines in, and it's always taking up space. Well, here it takes up no space at all. Create platform ledges. So the way that the mechanics works is if you hit the middle of the platform, you just sort of jump to wherever your the point is. If you hit the edge of the platform, the ledge, you jump up onto the platform. But as you can see, there are no ledges here. Um, and in fact, so what happens is we create a bunch, what happens is at the beginning of the scene, we create a bunch of ledges and then we hide them. Well, if I take off the hide, it will suddenly become immediately obvious that we are generating these grab on points on the sides of all the platforms. And I knew I wanted it this way because uh, I don't want to be manually, you know, dragging all of these in the scene, you know, especially if I have to move stuff around. Uh, I wanted to be created, and so they're not here. What happens for each platform 
each platform has uh, two additional points, ledge left and ledge right. Um, ledge left is about there and ledge right is about there. What we do at the beginning of the scene is we create a ledge on the right side, a ledge on the left side, and then we make sure it's just a bit taller and just a bit wider than that. Uh, short platform is the same except we only use one because it is that short. Um, we make we stick in the middle and we make its width this and we make we made its width just wider than the platform, make its height just taller. Um, and then, oh, uh, okay. I, I was just worried if I messed everything up there. No, and then we hide it, um, which is why it's not seen. But if I unhide it, it'll become immediately clear how it works. So if you miss that, you just sort of jump around. If you collide with that, you hop up onto the ledge. Cool. So that's utilities, characters, animating, and then hiding. Cool. Then we get to the meat of it. How does the grapple work? Well, this is what I was talking about with behaviors. Behaviors allows me to encapsulate a whole lot of logic that would otherwise be quite messy and quite complicated, and actually boil it down to a couple of fairly easy to read lines. Now, let's go over what these lines, uh, let's go over the li logic of the lines before dealing, uh, diving into the events behind them. If we um, want to fire the grapple, so if we've released our mess left mouse button and grapple is loaded, uh, fire a grapple towards a point uh, from a point towards the grapple helper. Um, grapple helper is this little guy over here. It doesn't exist in the scene, but is generated. And if I fill him in with a color, uh, it'll become clear immediately how we, he is used. So every time we click. Um, we generate this grapple helper at the angle that we're interested in um, and at a certain distance away. And our grapple will travel to that and anything interacts with it along the way, well, we treat it as, a, as some kind of grapple we need to handle. So if the grapple is not attached, so grapple can attach, and the grapple's reached its destination without colliding with anything, we just return the grapple to the player. That's the swinging, mo that's this bouncing motion. If the grapple can attach and it has collided with a ledge, well, we attach it, attach the grapple, and this means we don't trigger any other events, and we swing the player over the ledge. If the grapple can attach and it attaches and it collides with the floor or a platform, well, we want to swing the player to the grapple instead. So this is grapple over ledge, this is player to grapple. I'm going to uh, just make this unseen once more. And finally, if our player is close enough to reload the grapple, reload it and um, remove the grapple and grapple helper. Let's dig into how each of these works. Uh, how do we know if grapple is loaded for a player? Well. And this is inside of the grapple behavior. We have two behaviors, player and grapple behavior. Well, our player behavior has a property called grapple loaded. Um, it also has a visible property in the editor called distance to travel. By default, it's 300. That can be adjusted. This is how far the grapple should fire, uh, reach as its maximum distance. And then we finally have a state, um, which we use for a couple of in we use for internal checking. So. If the grapple is loaded, we simply check, you know, if our grapple loaded property is true, return true. Um, player fires grapple. Mm -hmm. Thank you, phone. You can go on silent. So this is kind of what I was talking about when I said behaviors let you make um, your logic much cleaner. This is quite an ugly block of events. I mean, it's not that they're not simple or straightforward as a lot of GDevelop events are, but there's a lot of them that kind of offset. And if this was what I saw when I opened this block, I would have a hard time reading it. But because it's nicely encapsulated under this uh, action called fire from this to this, it makes it easier to understand for me. Uh, what we do up here is we say, uh, we flip the player to look the direction that we're shooting the grapple. So if our mouse is to the left of our player, flip him to flip them horizontally and if your mouse is to the right, uh, make sure they're not flipped. 
uh, because the default position is to look to the right. So create a grapple at a point. Um, our player has a point called uh, grapple launch, which is about over here, so slightly to uh, just slightly offset from the player. So create a grapple at that point, rotate the grapple towards the mouse, create grapple helper. Um, so create that helper object and then move it around the player. Let me open this up. So take grapple helper, position it. Um, Position it at the same point uh, as the grapple, I think it's just to begin with. Move it outwards by the by how far we've asked it, the maximum possible distance the grapple can travel. So by default that's 300 pixels. So put it on top of the grapple, move it outwards 300 pixels and rotate it around the grapple um, at, uh, rotate it at, the, at, at its angle. I, I've just realized you don't put this isn't putting it at the position. What this does is it says the position it should rotate around. So rotate it around the grapple at this angle at this many at this distance. And so that's how you get your final the final arc that it's meant to go to. And finally, tween the position of the grapple um, to grapple helper. And we ease out quad basically means um, start fast and then slow. If you've not seen tweens visualized. Um, you should just be able to search it on the internet. Um, I use this all the time whenever I'm using tweens just to see what I'm looking for. And our tween is ease out quad. Uh, where is it? Quadratic out. There we go. So it goes quite... The, um, as you can see from this graph, bottom is zero, top is bottom is beginning, top is end. It quite quickly gets to the top and then sort of smooths out towards the end. So that's how you get a nice smooth sort of trend nice smooth movement so yeah what we're doing is we're moving it from grapple from where it's created to where it should end up and we're also setting that the grapple is no longer loaded grapple can attach uh, it's just one of the properties the, our grapple and this is the second behavior has a property called is attached and well can grapple attach simply just returns that so if our grapple can attach and it's reached its destination, and we know it's reached its destination, if the tween on it has finished play, um, remember that we gave we launched it with the tween grapple launch. Well, if it grapple launch is finished, then it must have reached its destination. And return grapple to player. Um, this one, I'll say what it does, and then I'll say why it does it. So we remove the tween grapple return, and then create a tween called grapple return. And grapple return takes grapple and tries to move it to the exact point on the player that it was launched from. So object in this case is player, and grapple launch is where the grapple was launched from. Now, why do we do this? Well, if we don't do this, what will happen is the grapple will go. The grapple, if the player is moving when the grapple returns, the grapple won't go back to the player. It will go back to wherever they were when the grapple started moving backwards. So the trick to this is that this event will fire a lot of times. Uh, you know, for every frame that the grapple is moving backwards, it's going to try and reach the player. And so what happens is we remove the old tween and we set a new tween. Um, and by doing that, we ensure that the grapple follows the player. So if I move, if I'm running forward and backward, you can see that the grapple is following me. Um, and if I start jump, you can see that the grapple um, follows me at, in its return pattern. And that's why it does it. Because if we don't, uh, if we don't do that, if it only happens once, then uh, the grapple will go back to where I was at the time, but that won't be where I'll, that won't be where I am now, and it will just look weird. On to the interesting attachers. So if our grapple can attach, if we've collided with a ledge object, this is a very, this is a normal collision. Um, a small little gotcha I found. I tried doing this condition inside of a behavior, and it didn't select the correct grapple ledge object. So when you, um, so G develop how it selects. So right now when you do this collision, it selects the exact grapple ledge uh, object that it collided with, and it does this by its own internal magic, you know. It assumes, aha, it has collided with x, so it should do x here. 
if you do it inside of a behavior, you don't get that. Um, it just selects the same object each time, but it's not going to be the object you expect. It will be, I don't know, the first one created in the scene. Uh, so that's an interesting little gotcha I found. So if it's collided, attach the grapple and swing player over the ledge. Um, what we do here is um, we are once again tweening where object is our player and our tween identifier is climb ledge. We're saying, so remember that our ledge is going to be this grapple ledge. It's going to be this red object and it's going to, that red object is on the corner of the platform. What we say is, I want this object's position to go to the exact X position of that, pla of that platform edge. And I want it to go to that Y position, take away, which means move up, move up the height of the object, and then another 10 pixels. And that's how we get this nice jump up animation. So the player actually jumps slightly over the platform and then falls down onto it. So up and over, up and over. Why do we have a separate one for down? Well, this is actually a suggestion from Zachary, which uh, is a totally quality suggestion. Thank you very much for doing it. Um, so as you can see, the, the tween is basically the same. We want to go to the platform ledge and we want to go to, we want to go to its X position, so that pulls us on the left and right direction, and we want to go to its Y position, um, which gets us its height. But instead of doing minus the object height minus another 10 pixels, we actually add about 25 pixels. Um, this is just kind of back of, this is just trying it out. Um, and what this does is it gives us on the down, so this fires if the player is above, is below the ledge. But if the player is above the ledge, uh, we found it looked weird to have a small gap between the player and the ledge. And so we drop, and uh, I'll just explain as I show. So as I showed, when the player jumps up onto this, there's a small little gap. But if you fire downwards, the player just drops to the floor. Um, and this is a kind of small quality of life that looks quite nice because um, you sort of expect when you're falling down just to hit the deck. But if you're jumping up, you expect it's kind of nice to see that little, little overshoot. But that's the magic of how we get up onto the ledge. This entire section is if we need to swing. So if our grapple can attach, and instead of attack colliding with a grapple ledge, we're colliding with just a regular platform or the floor, um, then we just swing the player to the grapple, which would, believe it or not, just be another tween. Um, we select our grapple sprite has a point called swing point. It's hard to see, but it's just there. It's a couple of pixels behind the grapple sprite. And what we say is swing, animate our player to the swing point um, over this duration. We also have an internal uh, swinging state. Um, and the reason for that is this final one. How do we know when we can reload the grapple? We want to remove everything, clean it up, and get ready for the next go. Um, and we have these three conditions that we can return on. If the grapple is close, so below 60 pixels, if the grapple is returning to us, if the player is swinging, or if climbing ledges. Actually, I just realized that didn't really answer the question of why do we have a swinging property. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll check the one out slightly later. Maybe it is just left over from development. The reason why we, back to this, the reason why we have three um, conditions for practically the same thing is basically I tried combining them into one and it didn't work. Like for whatever shenanigan reason, um, if I try combining all three of these into an or condition, um, so this or this or this and this, uh, yeah, it just didn't work. Like, eh. So I'm sure there's a very good reason for it, and I'm sure there's a way to make it ever so slightly more efficient. Uh, but as it stands, it's not super messy, even if it is a little duplicated. Um, so put the sunglasses on and deal with it. So that's how we know when we're close enough to reload. 
And finally, uh, reload the grapple, which is just delete grapple, delete the invisible grapple helper object, and say that we are ready to fire again. And there you have it. Um, everything you take to get this, or to understand how this works. Now, what am I not happy with? I might as well be open and honest about this. Uh, so I'm not happy with how the player swings. So tweens are kind of like nice, but you know, if ideally, if this was like grapple, you'd want it to react a bit more in a physicky kind of way. So you jump up there, but instead of falling down straight after, you'd want the player to go up and sort of swing down to have like a more swinging motion. Um, right now, it feels a bit like laser lines, like you jump in laser lines. And also, yeah, if you are underneath the platform and you hit the edge of the platform, you can sort of walk through it rather than doing what you might expect and like swing up and around to get there. And I was sort of in the back of my mind and like I've heard suggestions and thoughts and, you know, is there a way that you could get it to swing up and around? Is there a way you can do this? Well, maybe, but um, I feel like that's a lot of experimentation. I kind of want to be done with this so I can move on to other tutorials and videos. Uh, another one is I wanted a rope for the grapple hook, and I tried a different kind of ways to like generate a rope. Uh, unfortunately, I just found that GDevelop doesn't like generation a lot. Um, the tools it provides isn't really made for that, and that's totally respectable. I completely understand that this is an engine that offers a lot with very little, and um, doing things like trying to generate different pieces of rope that each link to the previous piece of rope um, is a little outside of its remit, and that's okay, like, that's totally fine. I, even, I actually, just before filming this, I saw an interesting idea on, like, a uh, different subreddit saying, like, ah, you could just create a sprite and just keep stretching the sprite out, and I thought, well, that's a perfectly reasonable suggestion. Maybe I will try that in a future video. Um, so as it happens, there is no rope, um, which I recognize looks a little weird, um, but case sera, sera, I accept that it is uh, flawed and not totally uh, complete. Um, but I am quite I am quite proud of what I've got, um, and I I learned a lot about behaviors in the process and how to structure events so that you come to it and it looks nice and clean and tidy. There you go. All of that with fairly minimal lines for that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I look forward to any future suggestions, comments, or uh, critiques. I'm open to all and any. Thank you very much, Zachary. Put it there. Give me a fist bump. Boop. And <laughs> Zachary is showing me an image that's making me laugh, and I do not need to see it right now. Thank you, Zachary. Um, yeah. Give likes, thoughts, comments, suggestions, criticisms, and I'll see you at the next one. Ta-ra.